Hey, what's going on everybody? This is D here with High Off Blue Hour. And in this video, we are going to go over a powerful, very useful DaVinci Resolve plugin called Proto Version 2 or Proto V2 for short. Uh, this is a DaVinci Resolve energy effects plugin that was created by Patrick Sterling, who is just a great uh, resource for education on how to use DaVinci Resolve. Uh, his YouTube channel will be linked down below in the description, as well as a link to his site where you can access and download uh, this plugin. This video will not be a tutorial on how to actually install Proto V2. This is more so going to be about once it's already installed, just uh, what some of the things are that you can do with it and how you use it and just kind of, you can get an idea of what's possible with this plugin. Now, so Proto V2, once you have it installed on DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna really be able to access it in two different kind of tabs within your toolbox because there's multiple functions for the plugin. So the first one, we wanna go into our toolbox, but the first tab we're gonna look at is generators. So we're going to go down to where it says generators. We're gonna hit the drop down arrow on that. You should see something that says Sterling Supply Company. Again, this is once Proto V2 is installed in DaVinci Resolve. You should see something that says Sterling Supply Company. You wanna click on that. And then this will pop up where it says Sterling Supply Company. And then below that, you have the Proto V2 um, you know, option. So what you would do is just take this, drag it and drop it onto the timeline. I'm gonna stretch it out just a little bit so it's a little bit longer. And you'll see that you already got this kind of illuminated circle of energy on the screen here. Uh, then have Proto V2, have it highlighted. And then over here in the inspector, you'll have all of your controls for the Proto V2 generator. Um, you can see it's a lot, a lot of drop down arrows and things like that. I'm not gonna really go in depth into this. I'm gonna talk briefly about what I typically use the generator for. Most often it's for doing just kind of simple text type stuff. So right now in source, it says ellipse. But what we're gonna do is click that drop down arrow and I go down to text. When I click that, you get the text here. And then you would go down to text controls right here. Click the drop down arrow for that. And this is where you can, you know, alter your text and change it to say whatever you wanted to change. But what's change it to say whatever you wanted to say, but we'll keep it as text for now. And of course, you can change font, uh, scale, all of those different types of things. But then you can go further down your controls and go down to you got your core controls where you can dabble around with size glow controls uh master noise controls where you can adjust your seethe rate and kind of how fast that movement happens uh intensity controls this is where you would access color controls you got your colorize and this is where you would be able to change the color of the effect and then you got your intensity down here where you'd Talk about vibrance, saturation, gain, those things. Wind controls, mass controls. So just lots of uh, things down here to control. So let's go back up. Next to your text controls, you have a tab that says presets. And so when you click that, you get all of these presets. And these are just the presets that can, once clicked, will be applied to whatever your text is. So let's say plasma right here. If we click that, we get this effect right here. And all of these, when you press play, there's a level of kind of motion or movement to them that can be adjusted within your controls where you edit those. But I haven't been pressing play on these, so just in case you didn't already know, these all have a level of animation and movement to them. And then also too, all of your presets, once selected, you can go into controls and further customize them in terms of changing the color once again so even your presets can then be customized to your liking and that's often what i do with text when i you know, want to do certain text effects is just uh use the proto v2 generator and do some text things within there that's how i get some of the illuminated text type stuff that i sometimes periodically uh do but then the other thing is we have our source controls source right here i have text highlighted 
you can go beyond text and maybe you just want a line so you select line and now you, you're just working with a line and you can come down to where it says line controls and now you can do things to this line like maybe possibly keyframe animated so when you keyframe animate some of these different points and adjustments you can ultimately create uh, an animation of like a, a line moving around the screen or maybe following something or just doing you know whatever you creatively want to do and you can go back up and change source from line to again ellipse or rectangle or polygon sharp or you can do a star and just so on and so forth and all of these can be customized of course so that's just a very brief tip of the uh, tip of the iceberg look at the generator for proto v2 and again it's a generator and i want to point out one of the differences one of the big differences between the generator and the effect is that the generator gets dragged onto the timeline and pretty much treated like it's a piece of footage on its own so kind of remember that whereas the effect is something that has to be applied to footage that's already on the timeline so what we're going to do is take that opportunity to actually go look at the effect so deleted the generator thing let's close out the generator and let's go down one tab lower to effects click the drop down arrow go down to sterling supply company and when i click sterling supply company now we have proto v2 with effect at the end and so what you would do instead of just dragging this onto the timeline by itself like you would a generator you need to drag this and drop it onto a piece of footage or media that's already on the timeline. So what do we do? Let's just take, uh, we'll go ahead and use the Terminator. I think I've used this picture before to do an example of something, but we'll go ahead and just use it again. So we got the Terminator on the timeline. And then what you would do is just take your Proto V2 effect, drag and drop right onto your piece of media. And then we got that look. It's obviously very, very exaggerated here. And so what we would then do is go into our inspector, Proto V2 effect as inspector and mess around with our controls. So we have threshold here. Threshold, it's obviously kind of speaks for itself, but the, as you lower it, more of the effect in the light and the glow and all that type of stuff kind of burst through pretty much to the point where it's overbearing like it's too much so you might have to raise the threshold up so you know lowering it more of the effect burst through raising it less of the effect burst through and sometimes that's what you want you got to think of threshold kind of like a limiter like when you're met when you're uh, if you've ever edited audio or anything like that um threshold kind of functions in the same way that a limiter would when doing audio editing um roughly that might not be a complete apples to apples comparison but if you've worked with limiters you get the idea of what i'm saying so you can mess around with your threshold some but the big thing that i do is i come down here to channel and instead of luminance i change this to alpha and so you see when you do that, you get a lot more of a more natural look to the effect being added. It's not just this overblown, crazy looking thing. And then similar to the generator, you have all these controls down here, mass controls, uh, core controls, flow controls, uh, you know, your noise controls, colorization controls, all of that type of stuff. So once again, you can, you know, alter the, the color of different things and your intensity, vibrancy, saturation, uh, the gain on things, all of that type of stuff. So you get the idea there. But and then again, instead of preset, though, right here, it says user. But you click on user and you basically get access to the same things that are labeled as presets uh, in the generator that we looked at earlier so you can go ahead and click electro you know click plasma all of these things will then get added to our piece of media that we've added the effect to and again any preset that we've picked we can then go into controls and still further alter the color of that preset you're not just stuck with whatever color the preset 
already has when you choose it so uh that's a good thing so that's kind of i'm gonna cut the video short here because it's already a good you know kind of a longer video than i maybe wanted to do but that's one of the that's the big thing uh to remember about uh the difference between proto v2 generator and proto v2 effect the generator you just drag onto the timeline you can drag it onto the timeline on its own and kind of treat it like its own piece of footage whereas the proto v2 effect you have to drag that and drop it onto a piece of footage or onto a picture an image or a piece of media that is already on the timeline so keep that in mind uh there's going to be times particularly when you first download this that you might you know accidentally pick proto v2 effect and you're trying to make it do something that you have to actually go to proto v2 generator to do and but again proto v2 check it out very useful very useful plugin very powerful very just slick quality looking uh results with it uh patrick sterling check out his channel and uh check out his site so that is the video catch you on the next one